Welcome back to the garden. Today is Saturday, October 5th, and I am outside doing some cleanup and decided that I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you all what's going on in the garden in early October. Now, it's a nice day out, and a lot of the neighbors are taking the opportunity to do some yard cleanup as well so you'll probably hear some lawn mower going hopefully that does not disturb you too much so let's start over here in the round bed in this bed I have a couple of actually three cayenne pepper plants and look at that year in October they are still flowering to produce more peppers. I also have two Anaheim pepper plants in this bed. Here's one of the plant with a couple of fruits on it that is uh, blushing. I have a pot down here. I haven't shown this in a while. This is my pot with, um, what is this? Oh, here it is. This is my pot with the lemon verbena. I'm going to try to go ahead and plant it out in the landscape in some in one of the beds later on in the fall so that it, it's a perennial so it will definitely come back next year. Also I have the pumpkin, the calabaza pumpkin. Uh, there are five fruits on the vine. And as I've stated in previous videos, I am not certain that any of them will actually come to maturity before my first frost date, which is October 17th. I'm gonna have to cut back some more of this vine as it is starting to spread out again in this area. And taking over the entire area so I'm gonna have to spread it out again now in this pepper bed right here I have a number of plants I am gonna go over the varieties that I have I do have a couple of California Wonder Bell on the other side but right here on this side I have the giant Marconi a couple of plants a couple of fruiting fruits that are blushing on the giant Marconi here's one Ooh, something got it look at that you can't leave the stuff on the uh, plant to ripen because something else is gonna get to it before you can another giant Marconi a plant and down there in the back I have the poblano peppers and when I get to the other side, I've, this is my first time planting poblano peppers. When I get to the other side of the other pepper, I'm going to show you something that I did not know was possible. Let's go ahead and look at the other side. So on the other side of this bed, I have the Lisa pepper. Some that are blushing, I believe. That's probably the only one that's blushing at this time. Let me see if there are any Cali Wonder Bell in there. No, I think I have harvested all of those. Now what I've noticed is that the California Wonder Bell, they don't produce a lot of fruits. Um, they're not very prolific, so just have to enjoy whatever you can get off of them. Now this is the Rowena Pepper. Let's take a look at that. That's a Rowena. And I do see one in here. See one in here. That's blushing. This one is blushing. And then I see one that's ripened in here. If I can get to it. Actually, I see a couple in here. That's ripening. Here's one of the Rowena. That's ripened. I'm going to go ahead and pick it before some critter come out and get it. 
Isn't that pretty? Look how beautiful that is. Look at that. Look how beautiful. This is the Rowena pepper. There's also another Rowena down there. That's blushing. I'm going to go ahead and harvest that. And look at the nasturtium still showing out. Look at that nasturtium in this pot. Still showing out. It's beautiful. I see I have another pepper in there. That is probably another giant Marconi that's uh, ready to be harvested. And I'm going to make sure that I get it and not some critter. Now this is what I wanted to show on the Poblano peppers. Look at that. They are turning red. So I have always seen Poblano peppers that were quite large. But with this variety that I planted, it's a Baker Creek heirloom. And they only grow to about uh, three and a half inches or something like that. Uh, so I've, I guess I've left them on the vine for too long. And now they are turning, uh, they're blushing and turning color. So I'm going to go ahead and harvest those. I have taken out most of the tomato plants. I just have a few remnants left to be taken out. And down here, my little bush bean is uh, flowering. So I am looking forward to getting some uh, bush bean before the frost comes. These are California Wonder Bell peppers in this bed, uh, three plants, and um, don't see anything, actually, there's one that's blushing, I'm going to go have to, <laughs> there is a period that's blushing, I am going to have to go ahead and harvest that, uh, just to make sure that I get the benefits of my labor. The sedum, still looking good. It is not swarmed by the bees um, anymore. I guess they've taken all of the pollen or it does um, lose its usefulness to the bees. I am going to leave the basil as they're flowering. I'm going to leave those in the beds for as long as possible so that the bees can enjoy um, those couple of basils. One in that bed, one in this bed. There is my Lacinata kale, or commonly called dinosaur kale. I haven't harvested anything as yet off of this uh, since I refreshed it for the fall. Here's another basil I'm allowing to go to seed so that the bees can really enjoy it before everything has to go dormant. The only tomato that I have left in place uh, for the moment even though it's very diseased is the grape the Valentine grape tomato still producing still producing so I've left it there and we will continue to uh, harvest until the frost comes this is my fennel I only planted one fennel just this year, my first time planting fennel. And I am going to hopefully get this all these seeds once they dry. I am going to harvest them so that I can have it to use in my kitchen. When I make uh, cowboy candy, uh, I like to crush the fennel seed and use that as one of the spices that goes into um, the brine. So this is the fennel. Of course, my raspberry are still here in the pots. Three plants. Oh, I forgot to mention. In this bed, here are the little miniature cucumbers that I planted. The two plants. I'm going to take them out from underneath the basket so that they can climb up the trellis here seeing that I've already taken off 
the tomatoes that were here they can freely use a trellis to um to grow and like i said hopefully we can get something before uh the sun before the frost comes here is my celosia i'm leaving those up for the beauty the celosia jalapeno gonna come out and harvest these and take out these plants Over in this bed, I have a couple of um, Edgeversky peppers that are still producing, as well as the, of course, the celosia. It's just taking over everything, but I don't mind. As well as I have the Alapena Megatron. Look at this, look how beautiful these are. I am not sure I'm gonna make any more cowboy candy at the moment. I did see and some other um, options when I was watching a couple of videos um, how to use the jalapeno so that's probably gonna explore those um, options here is the celosia of course the scotch bonnet not sure you can see that well but the scotch bonnet is still here. We've uh, already harvested all of the ones were, that were um, ready, that were ripened. We have already harvested uh, most of those, all of those actually. But there are still more on the plant. A couple up here. Not sure you can see them. Scotch bonnet, jalapeno Megatron, really, 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 uh, probably going to be planting more of those next year instead of all the other varieties. Here's my sweet potato bags. I harvested one of the bags and I was hoping to have harvested these already, but I think... We'll get these done tomorrow if it does not rain or wait until next weekend uh, to get these sweet potato out of the bags. So like I said, I obviously did one of the bags, this one, and it was full with grubs. Oh my word. There were so many grubs in the bag. You know, I had seen the squirrels digging into the bags and I did not know why they were digging in. But once I harvested the bag, I know, I, I, I um, come to the realization that they were digging for those grubs that were in the bags. So I have um, taken out the pepper plants that were in these pots. And also the uh, zinnias that were here. So these are cleaned out. I'm just going to cover them. Once it gets closer to the frost. Here is the one pot that I did not clean out as yet. Still has some peppers that I am hoping will ripen a little bit or start blushing before I harvest them. Another giant Marconi pepper plant. No, actually this is Adversky. Another Adversky pepper plant. And my other kale plant, this is the blue, uh, dazzling blue kale. This is a dazzling blue kale. Of course, look at my nasturtium. Look at those leaves. Look at those leaves. So beautiful. My tower. The chocolate mint is still showing out as well. Still there. I've cut back the oregano and I've cleaned out the amaranth that was in this bag that I did not eat, get anything to eat from because some bug was enjoying it immensely. Here's my scallion pot and of course my thyme, a couple of thyme pots with thyme. So that's what's going on here. 
at Walnut Chase Garden and Home. I am going to finish, try to finish a little bit of cleanup of the tomato plants and call it a day. Thank you for uh, joining me. Appreciate your time. Please consider to like my video and subscribe to help me grow my channel. Bye for now. So this is what we always get today. Lots of peppers. We have some poblano over here. We have some giant marconi. We have some rovina. Some California Wonder Bell. Some jalapeno. Look at this. The jalapeno Megatron. Some tomatoes. This is the final harvest for the tomatoes. So, um, that's it. We also have, um, so everything was picked. Everything that's green was picked. I saw online where people uh, cook up the green tomato um, in the oven with Parmesan cheese and mozzarella cheese and all of that. I'm going to try it. We have some uh, scotch bonnet, a handful of pepper, some uh, grape tomato. So this is all of what was harvested on October 5th.